So the SEC has come out with a letter to respond to the Ripple Labs letter to Judge Torres. In this video, I want to take a quick look at the details in the letter itself straight from the SEC and answer a few of the issues around it and what this means for us. Now, let's start here looking at what Jeremy Hogan says. Of course, we've referred to the Legal Briefs YouTube channel in previous videos, and he is a great source of information on this XRP versus SEC case, as he is an actual lawyer, which I am not. But he points out about the letter that we're about to dive into, three quick thoughts. The SEC wants to remove Ripple's fair notice defense because they are worried about it. Two, it would be a blow to Ripple if it was removed. And three, the SEC wants it done quick because there are facts that they don't want to come out in discovery. So as you can tell, he thinks it's a little bit of a questionable thing. And he has noted already that he's going to be posting a video on this sometime tomorrow. So make sure that you hit up his channel for the full uh, review from a legal perspective. But from here, I just want to talk about it as a crypto and XRP enthusiast. And of course, this is not financial advice. My name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. If we haven't met before, this channel is about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. And we hope to help educate and inform. Let's go right into the letter itself. So in this letter to Judge Torres, this is from one of the lawyers for the SEC who we've heard before on previous calls, Jorge Tenrero. Again, apologies if I butcher that name. But this letter drafted to Judge Torres is in response to the defense that Ripple has put forth for a lack of due process and fair notice. And they're looking to strike that from the case. So, in this case, the SEC alleges that Ripple violated Section 5 of the Securities Act of 1933 for failing to register certain offers and sales of XRP. And the whole issue around this is around this Howey test. So, you can see how they're referring to this Howey case. So, we hear that a lot. What is the Howey test? Well, let's just take a quick look and see what a good definition of this would be. So if we go back here, the Howey test really constitutes these things. There's an investment of dollars in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit through the effects of the promoter. So for example, if you bought stock in Tesla, you would be investing dollars in a common enterprise. You would expect that they would be making a profit. That is your ultimate expectation in buying a security in a firm through the effects of the promoter. So you expect Tesla to be working to making a profitable business. Now, in this case, what Ripple is saying is, hey, uh, this money is not a investment in Ripple. If you purchased XRP, the token, you are not investing in Ripple, the company. You have no claim over the profits of Ripple Labs, the company, and uh, XRP functions outside of Ripple, so you, you wouldn't expect that any influence uh, in the price or the trading of XRP to be affected by Ripple Labs. Ripple Labs does not control nor set the price that XRP is exchanging for. So that's what, what Ripple is alleging. So if we go back here, the SEC is saying, hey, Ripple is seeking to avoid liability for its unregistered offering by diverting the court's attention with a number of affirmative defense arguments around fair notice. So they want to get rid of this from the case. So the SEC is asking that this gets stricken and... They want to also strike the motions to dismiss by Brad Gerlinghouse and Chris Larson. And it's for that same reason. So if you refer to the tweet that has 
this attached to it, which I'll link in the description. You can read this in much more detail. But the SEC is alleging that Ripple's claim to this fair notice is legally improper. And what they're arguing is that this is not the SEC's fault. It's not the SEC's fault that you didn't know this. And if we go here, we can see in one specific sentence, Ripple argues that the SEC failed to provide Ripple due process and fair notice because SEC staff allegedly met with industry executives and failed to tell them in italics that XRP was a security. Rather than acknowledge its own obligation to follow the law, Ripple instead posits that the SEC staff has an obligation to affirmatively warn industry participants about violations of other participants, even if the staff is in the process of conducting a non-public investigation, a requirement that does not exist in our legal system. So there's a lot of legal uh, jargon within this letter. So I think that's why it's a really great idea for you to subscribe to the Legal Bruce channel and hear what Jeremy Hogan has to say about this because he will speak more of the legal language. But what you can see here just from a casual reading even is that the SEC is trying to take this away from Ripple's argument and say, hey, you can't say this fair notice uh, is a defense. So strike it out. And then also here they want to move to dismiss the claims made by Gerlinghouse and Larson and their motion to uh, dismiss. So their SEC is sort of going on the offense here. But really when you look at it, it seems like it's more of them trying to play defense. They're on their heels here with what Ripple has done. Ripple, I think from everything we've seen, has had stronger arguments, and now the SEC is punching back. We'll continue to see this back and forth as the case continues to evolve. But for now, this is what we've got, so we will wait and see what the response back from Ripple is. As you can see, there's a proposed timeline here. If you want to stay informed on the latest news and updates pertaining to the XRP case against the SEC, Ripple Labs versus SEC, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will do my best to get you the latest and greatest in information and hit the subscribe button on the Legal Briefs channel because he really informs you well from a legal standpoint. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next one.